So while Americans are coping with the rising cost of living, uh, poverty is you know going up. Economic downturn indicators are present, like the brick and mortar stores that are shuttering their doors. And you know, all the while we have that, we have the constant pronouncements out of the mainstream, right? And I think this time, you know, they're shooting themselves in their foot. With the recent shooting that just happened, Kendry Castile, who was the student that purportedly lost his life in the recent shooting at STEM High School in Colorado, which was basically on the anniversary of Columbine, by the way, and it was only you know ten miles away from it or something like that. Uh, ostensibly, the attacker is in custody, and he. He had a accomplice who was a born female gone male. Old Matt, and we also know the second suspect was also in court today. That's right, David. And with a strikingly different demeanor, this suspect, the 16 year old, had short cropped hair, was engaged and very attentive with the judge. And right beside him was sitting his mother because he is a juvenile. Now, he was born a female, but his defense team petitioned the court that he be recognized as a male. That was granted. The DA is now considering whether or not to charge him as an adult. And so you can really see, you know, how unstable those gender fluids are. Uh, they're both in custody. And it's really the story of, of Kendrick that stands out, because I think this is a perfect example of a good guy stopping a bad guy with a gun. Uh, so the media shot themselves in the foot with this one, because they, you know, painted him as the hero. They, they told the story of what happened, and assuming, you know, all this is airtight, um, that he, he, he basically ch chased the shooters down and um, helped save a lot of lives. And had he been armed, he might have uh, come out of the showdown alive. Okay, the, the thing to think about that is, uh, as usual with the shootings, you know, the suspect was on radar for this potentiality. All right, the news stories I listened to said that he wasn't on, you know, any government list. The local sheriff says neither Erickson nor the other suspect, who is a minor, was known by law enforcement to be a threat to this community. Uh, but the possibility of his tendencies were known in the community, and they did say that, like in the same breath. High school student Michael Schwartz claims that Erickson did in the past talk about causing a lot of harm and sadness. I always thought he was just messing around and stuff, but sometimes he did hint at it here and there. So they, they knew that this was a possibility that this could happen. So again, it's not the gun, but another case of mindset and behavior, which gun laws will do nothing to address. See, because, you know, those who jump immediately to gun control, they tend to be a little less informed. And, you know, some people, they're just going to believe whatever they want to believe, regardless of what the facts totally support. Okay, because as, as soon as instances like this happen, people want to jump on, you know, the gun control bandwagon, which which does nothing to, con to control or address the behavior. And then you have the media that just manipulates the political discourse. Uh, so it's, it's really unfair. And we're, we're looking at it from that angle, because I think we need to go beyond the shooting. There's a lot of people, a lot of channels that like to point out some of the inconsistencies uh, bef uh, as the facts unfold and, and ultimately as the mainstream has uh, cemented their narrative, basically. Uh, we have people who you know point out the inconsistencies there, but I think really what we need to look at is the trajectory with, that these things take us on. We need to anticipate that there's going to be the ultimate conversation of gun control and how the media is going to paint it. And, I mean, and it's not just with guns. I mean, look what's happening with vaccines, which is actually pretty scary. I mean, it, whether you believe in personal belief exemp uh, exemptions, religious belief exemptions or not, um, I think everybody should have the choice for what goes into their body. But to get fined up to $1,000, to be to be threatened jail time, um, banning people from certain spaces, busting down the door to confiscate children in the dead of night, I mean, this is the stuff that's happened. And, hey, that last one was in a red state, you know? So it, this, this is above politics. This goes beyond politics. And, I mean, politics is just now become, I mean, many would argue it's long been, but I mean, it is, it's, it's a dog and pony show. Okay. And that's, you don't get anything done really within that paradigm anymore. And this, this totally transcends that. It, it completely transcends that because this is more about, it's more about self-defense. When we look at the multifaceted ways in which these initiatives are geared against the people, there's no way it's by accident. I mean, if we look at the, the fluoride right in the water, the chemtrails, um, the vaccines, what they're doing with vaccines, just look at some of the ingredients alone, um, ab abortions, uh, look, just, it's, it's, it's like they're trying to control the population while at the same time making as much money off of it as possible. You know, the gloves are off. The gloves are off. Whether you, whether you, you know, believe this kind of stuff or not, it's what the facts totally support. I mean, all the evidence is there. And what's really scary is most of this stuff is just cursory, but nobody's looking at it. So when we see 
uh, agenda after agenda. And, and what I mean by that is let's just look at one small example, right? With the media alone, the last time I checked, it was like six different corporations, you know, Viacom, Disney, um, Time Warner, uh, so on and so forth, that owned, I think it was 75 to 85% of the media. That's a staggering number, okay? And the last time I heard, it was only down to three companies. And the thing is, they ha all have interlocking ownerships um, on their board of directors and everything. So they're essentially, we're talking about one to two entities that control um, 85 percent of what you read watch you know hear whether it's a, a magazine a, a from the news media you know what I mean pick your poison that's a lot of control so if they wanted you to know something or didn't want you to know something you would or wouldn't know that thing which is why when it comes to vaccines or guns you hear the people out there parroting the same nonsense Okay, the, they use these numbers. I mean, I just proved in my last video that you can use the same numbers from the mainstream to paint a more balanced view. Like, for example, yes, measles is very infectious, but is it freaking deadly at all? Yeah, I mean, it's less than 2% chance of, of it being deadly. It's a 1 in 1,000% chance of you getting the encephalitis, okay? I mean, what are the odds of, of complications from the flu or from a cold? You see what I mean? You can compare those numbers as well, and you can make it sound really scary, or you can paint a more balanced view. You know what I mean? So just looking at these things, I, I think the, the incidents alone, it may be beneficial to point out some of the inconsistencies. There's some channels that do that, you know, about the purported facts. That's why I just say, you know, let's just assume it's airtight, right? Um, but it's ultimately the trajectory that the narratives take us on subsequently. And I think that's really what we need to look at. And, and I continue to reiterate it because I think it's so important that if individuals have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, if they're able to look at some of this stuff, um, once you once you've got a certain understanding, we've got to I think deliver that to other people in a way that can impact them and help them understand sort of what's happening here. Because again, it's multifaceted, and it's only cursory. It's it only takes a cursory look. You know, just scratching the surface to see some of this stuff. Look past the extensive answers. You know, look past the official pronouncements and and, and dig a bit deeper. That's what that's what you know journalism is. That's just it just takes a little bit of investigation. I think we all have the capability again to do this this stuff but it just it takes a little work